Okay, so my name is uh, Mike Hamblin. I'm uh, an Associate Professor of Dermatology at Harvard Medical School, and I'm a Principal Investigator at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. Uh, my area of research is uh, largely in uh, the applications of light in medicine. So I do uh, photodynamic therapy, which is the combination of non-toxic dyes with visible light, and I also do what we call low-level laser therapy, which is the use of red or near-infrared light to treat all sorts of diseases. And the diseases that we treat with low-level laser therapy can be things like wound healing, can be things like inflammation and joint disorders, um, can even be serious things like heart attacks and strokes, traumatic brain injury, spinal cord injury, and other life-threatening disorders. So this is the DOSE response conference, and one of the observations that's been made in low-level laser therapy is that the more light you give, the results are not necessarily better. In fact, sometimes when you give more light, the results can be worse than they were with when you only gave a bit of light. So this so-called biphasic dose response, or Arndt schultz curve, has been known for many, many years, for maybe 40, 50 years since laser therapy was first discovered. But it's not really known exactly why you get this biphasic dose response. So one of the focuses in my laboratory has been to tease apart the molecular and cellular events that lead to this biphasic dose response. So we sort of know where the light is absorbed in the, uh, in the mitochondrial respiratory chain, and especially unit 4, which is cytochrome C oxidase. And we know the immediate events that happen at the cells. You get more ATP, you get reactive oxygen species, you get nitric oxide release, and you get more cyclic AMP. Now some of these mediators, such as reactive oxygen species and nitric oxide, are considered to be Janus mediators. Janus comes from the Greek idea of the two-faced god, which is, an, in other words, something that can have a good effect, but also a bad effect. So the thing about reactive oxygen species and nitric oxide is that low doses, they can be beneficial, they can stimulate the cells, but at high doses, they can be harmful and even toxic and kill the cells. So we believe that a little bit of light generates good amounts of these Janus mediators, the reactive oxygen species, the nitric oxide, also things like cyclic AMP, and they are, have beneficial stimulation effects in the cells. But when you get large amounts of these Janus mediators, you have harmful effects and it kills the cell. So we've been working with traumatic brain injury, so this is where we shine near-infrared lasers on the heads, usually of experimental animals, but some of our collaborators have done this with patients who've had traumatic brain injuries. And we find that if you get the dosimetry right, you can have a remarkably beneficial effect on the neurological performance of the mice and the rats who've had these traumatic brain injuries. And then in the case of patients, we've had remarkable beneficial effects in patients, even as many as five or six years after they've had a traumatic brain injury. But again, the dosimetry is crucial. If you give too much light, the beneficial effect can be reduced or even go away altogether. So it's, it's really important in, when you're designing um, the laboratory experiments, or even more important when you're designing the clinical trials, to really get the dosimetry correct because of this, this whole biphasic dose response. So in conclusion, I think that the, tr the transcranial laser therapy has got, you know, it's a real big possible application in the years to come. Not only traumatic brain injury, but strokes. Strokes is a very common serious problem, but also we have this epidemic of neurodegenerative diseases, particular Alzheimer's disease that is forecast to multiply at least tenfold as, as, as the baby boomers age. And there's, there's no real good pharmacological treatment for any of these brain disorders, but transcranial laser therapy has potentially very wide applications.